This is our driving review of the Mercedes GLE Coupe and also as a special version the Mercedes AMG GLE 53 Coupe. So please join us for exterior, interior and the driving experience. We will also compare GLE SUV to GLE Coupe and of course take a special focus here on the 53 AMG model. Everything as you know here on Autogefühl with Thomas and Jonas behind the camera in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go! Please subscribe to us if you haven't done so far and warm greetings to our long-term subscribers here from freezing but beautiful Austria at 2,000 meters or 6,500 feet height. And here the Mercedes GLE S Coupe, especially at the 53 AMG. Let's take a look at the front grille because when you think about a GLE SUV, the top part of the front grille is a little bit wider. We also see it in our overlay picture of the GLE SUV front grille, whereas the GLE Coupe or Coupé, we always say Coupé because we lean to the French original pronunciation. There's also a separate video about that. Then here, the lower part is a little bit wider to make it look more aggressive. And also, there are different front grills available, a standard one. Then there's an AMG line. We also have vehicles of those on location. My favorite front grill with this diamond pin grill. And then here, the 53 AMG has those very massive vertical fins which make it even look more aggressive with the AMG badge as well. Also sensors are hidden behind the Mercedes logo. And also the 53 AMG gets bigger you know, areas right here in the lower part. Really beautifully done, very sporty but yet elegant. And the color for today is, yes, brilliant blue. One of the Thomas blue colors here for Mercedes. Headlamps start with LED actually with a beautiful daytime running light and optional you can get those multi-beam LED lights with the high beam range. And we also did some night shots for you where we can see that it was really very well illuminating everything. And those multi-beam LED lights they can also save some of the spots for example when you are behind a car that actually those spots are left out so you can drive with high beam on yet not blinding anyone. We also have a white car here on location for the 53 AMG and also a satellite gray one. But definitely our brilliant blue <laughs> GLE 53 looks best here as contrast to the white snow. And the length here for this duration is 4 meters 94, 16 foot 2 or 194 inches. That's about 4 centimeters longer than the predecessor or 2 centimeters in wheelbase longer than the predecessor. But however, and that's interesting, the wheelbase here of the GLE Coupe is six centimeters or two and a half inches shorter than the one of the GLE SUV. BMW doesn't do that differentiation between the X5 and the X6. Mercedes actually affords to have this differentiation then because they say they want to make the Coupe a little bit sportier as for the driving feeling. We'll soon find out if that's the case. Yeah, of course, as we have the AMG 53 today, it will of course be the case somewhat no, just to <laughs> tell you that in advance. Wheels come actually in the GLE Coupe from 19 to 22 inch. The 53 AMG always features 20 inch and optional we got here 21 inch. Yeah, still somewhat of a compromise. I think 20 inch might be the best compromise between visual and also the comfort still. Here with winter tires, it looks a little bit smaller. With summer tires, those wheels would be looking even bigger. Then of course, you know, the typical line right there for the coupe with this sharp ending here, 
strong shoulders. Overall, a very central design, definitely the big difference also to the SUV, which would be continuing right there. Here then with the chrome frames around the windows, that's also a nice contrast to the brilliant blue, definitely. And talking about suspensions already, you start with a normal steel suspension, optional the Airmatic air suspension, which is standard for the 53 AMG, but then in a special stiffer AMG setup. For the GLE Coupe, you can also get this e-active body control, which can also lean inside the corners. We tested that one with the GLE SUV already. But in general for the GLE Coupe, not for the AMG models, because the AMG models are set on the sportier tone and then exclusively feature an anti-roll control that the car does not lean into the corners. Actually, yeah, again, the e-active body control would lean to the inside of the corner, you know, to you know, even out those G-force effect, and here the anti-roll stabilization keeps it just straight, that you don't roll to the outside of the corner. Very interesting, and again, we would test that in the driving part, and you can check out different suspension settings from our different GLE reviews. We will also link them in the video description and in the pinned comments. The rear of these SUV coupes is always splitting opinions. Some love it, some hate it. What about you? Please tell me your opinion in the comments right there. Definitely in this new generation, here because of those horizontally drawn tail lamps, also with a new LED signature, it looks a little bit more elegant. Then we have this integrated spoiler wing right there, AMG badge for the 53 model. And you can see those are beauty tips just on the outside and they are very beautiful fake exhaust, yes. But again, the real exhaust is on the inside. Then you have those different fake elements right there in this checkered structure. And this was a very cool aluminum style contrast and together with the strong diffuser here then for the AMG model. So what's your take? And of course here when flipping the logo, then you can open the trunk, which we will take a look at in the interior part. So what do we have here under the hood? A three liter six cylinder with 435 horsepower, acceleration figure 5.3 seconds to 100 kilometers or 62 miles an hour. And of course, a standard classic all wheel drive with a rear wheel bias and then of course a little bit adaptive. So pretty powerful, definitely for this 53 AMG version. And it will also be, you know, quite significant as a petrol engine overall, because first of all, for the GLE Coupe, there won't be the entry two liter four cylinder engines as for the GLE SUV. So both not diesel or petrol. You will definitely start then with the three liter six cylinder, both on the petrol and diesel side. You will have a GLE Coupe 450 or 450 with a 3 liter 6 liter 367 horsepower, but not in all markets. For example, probably not for Europe or Germany, rather US and Russia and so on, for example. So you will have to check your market specifications there. Then here the GLE 53, as I said, and then there will be the GLE 63 AMG, 4 liter V8 bi-turbo with 571 or 612 horsepower in the S version. 4 or 3.8 seconds is the acceleration figure there. And then you'll have the 350D, 3.6-cylinder diesel, 272 horsepower, or the 400D, 330 horsepower. And then there will be the PHEV section, plug-in hybrids, either as a 350DE. This one is then is mated to the 2.0-liter 4-cylinder engine diesel with 320 horsepower overall output and a 31-kilowatt-hour battery 100 kilometers or 60 miles of range. And the same battery will be put in the petrol PHEV, which will also be available for the coupe, again with a 2 liter 4 cylinder, then mated to the same electric powertrain. So, very interesting as for the engines. So, let me sum up again no small entry engines for the coupe, both petrol or diesel, but you only get those then with the PHEV combination. Will be very interesting. We drove the DE diesel PHEV in the GLE SUV already. You can also check out that review. And I'm really looking forward to the PHEV as petrol. That could be a very important engine also worldwide. And if you also think about like taxation benefits and so on and, you know, locally emission free. And since the petrol engine will not be available as 450 overall in the whole world, this one here, the 53, can also be actually a quite significant petrol engine because the AMG share for the coupe is bigger than it would be for the SUV, at least for the predecessor, and Mercedes also calculates with that here for this all-new generation.
this is the car key, slim and light, also with the AMG badge here, of course, in this case, and a matte black finish. Mm, yeah, quite fancy. I like that. Keyless entry. It's like when you put your hand on the outside right there to shut it, and then on the inside to open it again. Door closing sound. Hmm. That sounds solid. Really cool. Do we also have soft close here? No, it's not in there, but I prefer a better closing sound. Soft close, of course, always an option. Then, inside of the doors, with the Artico leather red cover, pretty high class. Then we have a carbon fiber inlet here for a sporty look. Burmes sound system with a really good sound indeed. Here, seat heating, seat cooling, and also the gentleman's function. When you press this one, then everything you do here is for the other seat. When you want your boyfriend or your girlfriend, depending on who's driving, to have, like, you know, the seat heating is um, you know, not powered at the moment, but it's a pretty cool function, definitely. And reasonable door pockets right there. Then we have AMG entry badges and AMG floor mats here in the 53 version. Next to, oh, this like, oh, with winter tires, please only drive 240 kilometers. <laughs> yeah, seriously. I would remove it anyway, because it destroys this nice carbon fiber once again. Then zoom more to the screens and so on. We have the AMG steering wheel, which comes with a flat bottom and some nice microfiber dynamica on the side to have a better grip. The Distronic here in this new gen generation adaptive cruise control goes to the steering wheel. It's a little bit easier then. Then for the left thumb a button, for the right thumb as well on the other side to control the screens. Seats always come with sport seats in a GLE Coupe and would be standard a full article, sustainable leather red cover, in the AMG 53, or then also an AMG lines. You get inside then usually with dynamic microphone, like we see here, but for the whole inner seating area, an outside article leather red. Again, Mercedes offers a wide variety of animal-friendly choices, also for the coupe and also for the sports version. Just in this case, it's the full animal skin pack with some. Alcantara. So let's get inside right here. It's a fairly easy entry. Of course, the AMG sits a little bit lower as for suspension and so on, but it's still decently comfortable. There's no panoramic roof in this car here, this very car, but you can actually get one. Then there's headroom check, still some left with 1 meters 86 or 6 foot 1. And it's now it's really up, upright, comfortable seating position. Here the GLE Coupe has a flatter A pillar, so you have a little bit less room. Yeah, with the GLE SUV, you would have a more open feeling then, but still at a good level. Then the steering wheel can be moved up and down and also inward and outward, electric way. And it offers you really great grip. And by the way, here the um, Dynamica is really good with and without gloves. So this works very well then in, in this case. And you'll also have some special gauges here for the AMG models. We'll take you on a tour of the screens very soon. And one more thing I already want to show you right now here, when I power up the car, here on the left side of the steering wheel. So you can change the suspension settings, for example, but you can also change what you want to see in there and pressing this one here. So, so many things to do there, or here, for example, um, the exhaust note you can change then. So change what you want to change with pressing on the screen and here then for the rest. Yeah, the quality has been improved meanwhile of those additional gauges but still I think they do not fit to the rest of the interior so much and on the right side here this turning wheel like we know from Porsche for example to change the driving modes of the car and when you click on it um, this one does not do anything in this case other than switching back to the eye to the individual mode so turning for changing and then always clicking to the individual mode that would be your mode so to say yeah and then zoom more details to the screens there definitely comfortable that doesn't change here with the coupe but again a little bit less room you have available and the seats of course you change from the inside of the doors right there and again yeah always with this nice gentleman's function it's also like a differentiation from the glc to gle now the interior and let's start with a fancy thing you know here the integration of the ambient light is one of the coolest here in the GLE and the GLE Coupe, and of course you can also change the colors. And it's not only right there, also other parts of the interior, you know, inside of the doors, and also, um, yeah, oh, yeah, Jonas shows you that right there. Inside of the doors, for example, the co-driver side, that looks pretty cool. We can also change some more colors, and also at those handles, um, you know, in the lower middle console, we can show that later. So, uh, pretty cool, but I stick definitely with one of the blue tones. 
The general overview is here with the big air vents. That's the same GLE Coupé and the GLE SUV. Overall the same than 12.3 inch standard, two times for those screens, horizontal layout. Yes, the steering wheel is blocking something of that um, depending on the position. Then again, the controls here, home screen and then right thumb to control the screen, but also with touch or with the lower trackpad, that's possible, so really redundant controls. On the left side then you can control those digital instruments, soon more details to those. And again, those gauges for the performance ones here, you know, with the driving modes, also from this perspective. Overall, very sensual design, definitely. And if we move on over a little bit to the lower side here, for the temperature controls, this one is a nice clicking sound for hotter and colder, and I like to have that one separated still. Then, Payen and Lecker on the lower middle console being used, you can slide this one open, then to have an, either an inductive charging pad for your phone, but I always have it with a cable anyway, so there's you know, to USB-C twice, once for connection, once for charging only, because the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, they work over the cable only here at Mercedes. Then cup holders, they are adaptive and can also be cooled and heated. Then there's the mentioned middle trackpad, where you can also write something on, for example. Then the driving modes, also talk a little bit more about the driving modes when we drive the car very soon. And some other hotkeys, for example, on the other side for the GPS map. This is just to rest your hand. And we have the air suspension in here. That means you can raise it or lower it also here. But it's also automatically done depending on the speed you drive and also on the driving modes. Or we can activate the exhaust right there. Last but not least, there is this middle armrest where we can slide it open in this known split way like this. And some more space underneath with more USB-C charging. So, a little bit more details here to the infotainment system. It's a very nice and decent visualization. Comfort, you go seating comfort, for example. You can activate those seat connects and they're moving always a little bit while driving, just a little bit to um, you know, give you less fatigue. But you can also opt for that one here with the massage functions. Really cool. They have single dots in the seat, which are then controlled. So, it's a pretty amazing function, definitely. Then you can also set your AMG for the racetrack, but those performance gauges are more handy because then, for example, you can um, you know, check the engine function. If I turn it on, then you can see I can rev it up. Brum, brum. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, while it's charging, it started as well. You can see that all that are also working. The GPS right there. Nice visualization in Austria for you here today. Sometimes, of course, you know, a lot of stuff has been loaded right there. Well, yeah, I was a little bit getting loud from the vents. And what else? In settings, you can see here, change the ambient lighting as I was doing that earlier. Quick access here, for example, to activate or deactivate the head-up display. But you can also do it with the voice activation or then, for example, and I put the engine on for that as well. Hey, Mercedes. Hey, Mercedes. How can I help? I'm cold. I'm increasing the temperature on the driver's side to 22.5 degrees. So like that, or you can say like, drive me to Berlin for the GPS. For the GPS inputs, of, of course, one of the most, uh, you, know, you, know, you know, the best features to use for that. And Apple CarPlay integration, not all over the screen, but usually they don't have this widescreen format. Looks like this. And as for the music, um, it's actually quite good. So, wow, this is a nice surround sound. This Burmese sound system, one of the best there is. Crystal clear and always enjoyable to listen to that. And here you can always jump back to the Mercedes menu too. Digital instruments. This one is the AMG Super Sport View with revs on the right side, for example. Jonas can rev it up if he likes. Yeah, way to go. Brum, brum. <laughs> so you can have this view. Um, but you can always change what you want to see exactly. For example, what you want to see in the middle part, what you want to see on the right part. You can, for example, also have then a GPS input right here. See, like this. So this would be possible. Or a view how the driving details are changing depending also on the drive mode you pick. Then you can see here how that one changes. But you can also change the whole view of the system. 
So this would be super sport, but you can also get just to sport. If you're not super sporty, but just sporty, for example, then put a little bit more classic. Then you can pick again what you want to see in the middle and also on the right gauge. So it has the um, yeah, G-force meter in the middle and pretty flexible with that. Or you just go with a very classic view like this and have it there. Under state is also possible that we know from the normal Mercedes models too. But this one here, the so-called classic view. Here we go with the head-up display. And well, that's also a special AMG gauge where you have this big RPM meter right there. But of course, a normal speed also and some other informations if you like. Does it look like it's pretty cold here? It actually is. <laughs> so let, let's make ourselves comfortable in the rear. First of all, you also have a nice article leather that cover at the inside of the doors, also with the carbon fiber shoe tab, not to bring the snow in there. And the cool thing is, in this new generation of the GLE Coupe, you have more legroom. This is the seat as I would be driving. And you see, you still have plenty of legroom. So because the wheelbase has been increased, if you compare it predecessor GLE Coupe to this one here, but then if you compare GLE SUV now to GLE Coupe now, as we are in here, you have a little bit less wheelbase again, SUV Coupe comparison. But still, you see, this is actually still totally decent. So for four toy adults, it's no problem at all. Headroom wise, this also works. I mean, it's of course little, just like this, like a hand over my head when I lean my head backwards. It still works. So. There's hardly any big compromise. Of course, the SUV then offers more headroom. And there's one thing they changed here. The seat bench is a little bit lower, so it falls even more backwards. And it's still very comfortable here, yes, but that's like the cost of comfort. That's what you pay for that, you know? So um, it goes back like this. So you are sitting more comfortably in the SUV in the rear. It's the same also BMW X5 versus X6 that's also more comfortable in the rear than in the X5. So yeah, at some point they wanted to keep the headroom and so they had this decision then. In the middle part, by the way, it is also okay for short journeys. It's not too stiff on the middle part here. So you can also sit here with three adults that would actually work. Then we have Isofix at the outside seats. We also have the nice Alcantara inserts here, but again, stick rather with the base version or the base seats you have then with all the Dynamica microfiber. This will also be then cooler in summer and not that cold in winter like it is now. So that's the adaptive cup holders at the middle armrest. And we do flip the seats if we want already from here and a two third, one third split. Other than that, it's also possible to use just the mid, since we are in the skiing region here, here just the ski hatch, the middle part. And then there's also this rear climate unit. So when the car is powered, we see, you know, some additional features right there and USB-C devices, two more in the rear. So what about the luggage compartment? Is there any big compromise here? Let's find out. You can also have this foot cook, foot cook, cook, <laughs> foot kick opening mechanism like this. There was the proof. And then the only thing I'm not really, you know, happy with, you know, this, this top cover. I mean, it's the solution here for the SUV Coupes, but still don't like this solution somehow. I'm not sure if there's any better solution for that. So, and then here, actually quite wide dimensions. You are limited here then in the back part with the height. It would be continuing with the SUV like this, but below the cover, it's actually not a problem. You can see here, easy fitting, you know, so much luggage in here and I can go, also remove that for you, piece by piece. Don't even have to play any Tetris. So here we go. And this is then a clear view of what we have available in the GLE Coupe. You can see, you can use it for everyday driving. The leader figures would be in comparison 825 for the SUV and 655 for the Coupe. And the maximum leader figures 2055 for the SUV and 1000 790 for the coupe so you lose about you know two to three hundred liters each but again you know you can get along with that very well so what about the measurements <laughs> yeah there we go so the length is more than one meter ten so one meter thirteen the width here is more than a meter so like almost one meter ten and the height up to the cover is 44 centimeters, that's still decent. And the overall height in the very middle is about, you know, is more than 70, like 75 centimeters. On the sides, then it's a little bit less. This one would be more than 66 centimeters right there. 
but still, you know, actually quite well usable. So what else? This one here is a 12 volt power supply. This one here is to lower the car actually a little bit with the air suspension. And then, yeah, that's also then a big difference. We cannot flip the seats from here. So we have to go around and like this. And then you always have to check if the front seat is actually put to the front. But when we have a very tall cameraman, this might not always be the case, isn't it, Jonas? <laughs> so that's like this and when I now measure to the front seat I can you know almost put the two meter uh, in there of course still the seat is not all the way in the front and that's also with the other side that you can get a full access right here so that's then the full loading capacity and you can see here to the seat as I would be driving that's then almost there again the two meters so pretty well well usable you can also remove this top cover there and last but not least if you look underneath right there lots more space and you can of course then also fit a replacement tire if you order that option Well guys, let's start with some sporty driving. Whoa, <laughs> that was 0 to 90 kilometers an hour. Pretty powerful and there you can see already what this AMG beast <laughs> is capable of. And we don't need a V8 for that. Oh, sports mode here, the exhaust mode is also tuned up. And wow, pretty beautiful tunnel in here. So very scenic road also for you guys wow hard on the gas we have to be a little bit careful definitely I go back to the sports but not sports plus so they we still have some ESC left so we shouldn't exaggerate that also when the road is a little bit wet like it is at the moment but definitely you feel the pure sportiness of this vehicle first of all that the coupe is a little bit sportier than the SUV feels like you know a smaller vehicle definitely and then of course this AMG setup we have here this not only changes the power that would be one thing we have driven you know the the base engine of this one before definitely beast here <laughs> in the engine performance but also as for the other setup you know the air suspension is really laid out very stiff and also the front axle this is an important point for the steering precision so they have a different front axle here on the 53 AMG version and so it is for once a little bit stiffer than from the front again but also a little bit more precise as for the steering so the more direct input is guaranteed and this is again a thing of you want a sportier then go for this one you want more comfort then maybe go for the most powerful non-AMG version but you know you can pick that for yourself and feel here that the input is really really precise see it here it's, it's it's a slalom like effect as you would have maybe with a with a sports car also that's pretty cool so now for whatever reason speed is being reduced here but that means and later on it's also being taken away and i mean driving slowly with this vehicle feels like standing still because the noise insulation is so well done yeah, you hear something from the exhaust, definitely. You can also change it here individually, also the powerful, and you also hear something more of the exhaust sound, even when you're just now at a slight acceleration. So I have to be a little bit careful right here. And then when the speed is being drawn, like set free again, like a couple of meters, we can accelerate once again, exhaust set the powerful, and from 50 kilometers. Blop, and that's 100. So you already heard that the car was shifting back first. So it's not about the turbo lag, it's more about the shifting lag, so to say. How can you not have that? Well, use the shifting pedals on your own. Oh, wow, great ambient lighting here also in the tunnel. So shifting pedals here, very crisp. You even hear them clicking. And then you can shift back yourself first and then immediately accelerate. And of course, it's a little bit more fun to use the shifting pedals on your own. And you can also induce a little bit more of that sound. Here we go. 
stop also when you're shifting up. Here a little bit better in the tunnel. Of course, noise insulation isn't that well done that you don't hear so much then. That's the thing then also with modern cars. So they're so well insulated that that's also the reason why they do those artificial sounds on the interiors that you can still hear actually what's going on because everything is so well insulated for soundproof reasons, you know, like wind noise and so on. And that's actually also a good thing, definitely. So how you like the AMG 53 here so far? You want directly to start with more <laughs> agile driving. Because here in Austria, it's really hard to find so many agile driving spots, definitely. Yeah, it's definitely a lot of fun. So we can say Coupe is a little bit sporty, a little bit more fun to drive than with the SUV. Even more so in the AMG. So the AMG trim definitely fits to that, definitely. Um, However, then the question is, if you want more comfort, then you would not go with the AMG trim, or well, then again with the SUV, if you want more loading space in the back, don't feel totally different. But again, you know, when you have SUV, normal trim, versus coupe in an AMG trim, that is then quite a, quite a difference, because you have like sportier plus sportier, you know, with coupe plus AMG. So this is then really a difference you feel noticeably. And you don't have the feeling that you would be driving a big SUV because handling and suspension wise and that it's not rolling and so on. This rather feels like a smaller sportier vehicle. Also one of the reasons they put the entire roll stabilization here for those AMG models exclusively. So the GLE, GLE Coupe, they do not offer rear axle steering. They do offer this special e-active body control, you know, where the car can lean inside the corner. But here for the AMG models, they, they thought, let's do exclusively this, A, this AMG roll stabilization. So the car keeps more upright on the road, keeps more straight. And that is also playing an effect because, I mean, no matter what I do with the car here, it does not have like this SUV rolling effect because it sits higher and so on. This one here, the AMG version also sits a little bit lower. And again, stiffer air suspension, where you don't feel anymore it's an air suspension, together with the anti-roll stabilization then makes this SU typical SUV feeling or like a soft air carpet ride feeling that just diminishes. And when we're here uphill and have the powerful exhaust on, shift back again and then Yeah, really refined also this um, this engine definitely and at the end of the conclusion you know I'll test some different um, uh, surroundings of course when you giving it a go here on the throttle the fuel economy is ridiculous mm. but even before that I did some you know resettings and then keeping it straight and was still ending up with you know very very high fuel fuel consumption like about 12 liters and one kilometers. I'll check out if I can bring it down somehow on a straight road, but we had some good results with the normal three liter six cylinder in the GLE SUV with about nine liters on one kilometers and it's about 26 MPG US, 31 MPG UK. That would be cool. But here in the AMG trim, although it's the same base block, it seems to be definitely a couple of liters higher just because of the different tune, even if you keep it rather steadier, you know. And when the road is, you know, a little bit uneven here, mm, yeah, from time to time you get the feeling, mm, yeah, it's cool and sporty fun, but then again, do I want to lose the comfort that this car usually gives you? Yeah, so I'm just mentioning that, you know, that you can decide then for yourself, it's definitely a lot of fun to drive this year and yeah, so precise, um, so agile, doesn't remind us of a, of a big SUV. I think that's, you know, that's one of the cool things they wanted to achieve and actually they did also achieve that. So that's about, you know, sporty and agile features and so on. But what about like a normal city driving, a little bit more traffic and so on. Let's hop to the city with the relaxed driving lounge.
you know you have this upright seating position still this suv character although it's here the copay so it's still a very comfortable car yes just in the 53 53 trim you have to be aware of that that you do lose some comfort on the cost of more sportiness but that's probably exactly what you want when driving this vehicle there is also this new MF system here, so the mild hybrid. There we also see like EQ power and charge. So there's recuperation happening when I'm off the throttle. And we also get something of an electric boost. And recently also had it in the Mercedes GLC. And also the same in the C-Class MF. So that the Mercedes systems here, they are not necessarily saving so much fuel, but they're giving you more boost, for example. They're saving fuel on paper, but is it also in reality fuel saving? We'll also keep you updated with the fuel economy figure later on. Driving through Innsbruck here at the moment, by the way, a beautiful also here with the river that goes all the way through with this deep green color because of the sediments that are carried over from the Alps when the river is running down. So, but here from city driving, I mean, yeah, you're a little bit limited as for the view with the coupe when you look to the rear. Um, you know, have to bear that in mind. Then, however, you do have blind spot monitors, for example, um, you know, the triangles and flash when someone is trying to overtake you. So that's definitely very helpful. Other than that, it's still a very comfortable car and you can also get along in the city. It's easy to maneuver, easy to steer around and so on. I, mean, I always like to look at that, you know, at the brilliant blue color, definitely. <laughs> Even through the side mirrors. So as for the steering input, the AMGs are a little bit stiffer also from the steering and I like that because sometimes the base Mercedes steerings are a little bit too soft to me. They still feel natural, they don't have dead areas or something, but here in the AMG it definitely feels a little bit more direct and, uh, and a little sportier. Oh, now here over this construction site hole. Well, yeah, there you feel that it gets really rough then with this one. So I think if we have to go left here. It seems like the like the blind spot monitor was act, uh, we know was, was deactivated, was it? I'm not sure about that. So we can also check it. Is it set to, to English by the way, this GPS? Yeah, it looks like. So we can say, hey Mercedes. Hey Mercedes. Huh? Oh, that was like so I can also um Either say hey Mercedes or then the button here. Activate blind spot monitor. I'm sorry. Can you say that again, please? Activate the blind spot monitor. And I don't know where I should go. I think left, probably. Yeah, left. So with the head up display, it works. When I, when I say hey Mercedes and then um, activate head up display, but maybe it doesn't get blind spot monitor. Maybe it has a different brand name at Mercedes or something. That could also be. So let me go on left and head on to the motorway. Just a little bit. We can get, get it to a little bit more speed. Oh, what's the police doing there? Roadblock or something? Oh, the GPS also said that the road was blocked, but now it's not blocked anymore. Hmm. In this case, we can also go to the sports mode and just give you uh, at least some, you know, acceleration here just when you just hit the throttle once. That's already th 30 to 60, like just pressing the throttle once and you're directly there. Of course, I have to reduce the speed here to 50 and I can also set the cruise control here, left side of the steering wheel. So it's really practical now that there's not this separate column anymore. You just set it here with the left thumb and then the distance to the car in front of you is being kept actually so uh, and it's actually pretty reliable they also have those updates for the lane keeping assist and yesterday um, as i was driving the glc i was testing also that it's now actually respects the emergency lane so when you're on the motorway and you're on a left lane and it's getting traffic or traffic jam even then it's not in the middle of the lane the cars but it moves to the left there's still the emergency lane left that's a very useful feature definitely pretty interesting here now at about 70 kilometers an hour or like you know, 45 miles per hour 
still very, very silent. The whole car, the noise insulation is really um, extremely good. This Alcantara inside ceiling is probably also even dampening that. Hardly anyone ever mentioned that, that interior materials, if you have, for, for example, more fabric or more Alcantara, will also have a good effect on the noise insulation of the car. Because just like, you know, when you think about like a room in a house when you have some curtains or some sofa in it, that you also have less echo for that. So definitely also a very, very interesting aspect as for that. So overall, very calm, neutral, balanced handling feeling with this car. Yet again, you do feel the AMG setup. And also if you compare the Coupe versus the SUV, they don't feel like completely different vehicles. However, here with six centimeters less or two and a half inches, almost two and a half inches less in wheelbase, there's a slight difference you feel. It feels a little bit smaller and it is actually a little bit smaller than as for the wheelbase. So this is noticeable. And I was really wondering that Mercedes takes this, you know, this extra cost they have by having two different wheelbases and but they obviously really wanted a differentiation between the SUV and the Coupe. The other competitors do not do that. But I think it is actually noticeable. So um, yeah, why not to give the customer a little bit more sportiness than well, that if they can actually um, you know, afford that. You know, by the way, traffic jam function we can um, also test out if I set the cruise control. And let's see what the car does. So I will also see then you know, which speed the car is set to. And while, you know, while doing that, you can also browse the menu like this, for example, with the lower touchpad. I can also use the thumb here and see that head-up display is activated. What's that? Oh, that's the, the car wash mode, when you know, all um, windows are being shut, shut off and so on. This would be, ah, it's like entry mode, it's lowering, lowering the car. So, assistance systems, let's see. Attention assist, active blind spot assist. No, it's actually, oh, active lane chain assist is also available. Let's also activate that. So, because I haven't seen the blind spot on the flashing yet, but that might also be, uh, you know, due to speed or something. One thing this car does not al already have is a capacitive steering wheel. So it does realize if you're at the steering wheel, if you're now like turning it and not by, you know, touching it. So there can be some false positives when you're just running straight over time. And here you see in this traffic jam, the car is just rolling. It is also keeping its lane, but you should keep your hands on the steering wheel all the time. Here in this case, you know, just for demonstration purposes, uh, but you see that it's keeping the lane, definitely also steering with you. And then after a while, yeah, like now the car complains, keep your hands on the steering wheel again. And now to our conclusion for today with the Mercedes GLE Coupe and of course the special focus here on the GLE 53 AMG also as Coupe. Well, first of all to the difference GLE SUV and GLE Coupe, of course it's the design, this falling roofline. Then we have the little bit shorter wheelbase which makes this one here in the driving experience a little bit more agile. Still you have plenty of legroom in the rear and also headroom is okay little bit less comfortable on the rear bench than in the SUV and of course limited in height than in the trunk. However, still very well usable. And of course the difference when you take a GLE SUV and then to the GLE Coupe as a 53 version, it's even bigger because here in the AMG 53 is of course even sportier, especially from the suspension. You have to know that you will lose comfort with this very stiff air suspension they put in here. So if you want this comfortable air carpet ride, then you should not go for the 53 AMG model, but rather for one of the non-AMG models. And always take a look at the wheel size. So when you go a little bit smaller, then you also have a little bit more comfort. Then you can actually vary if you want it sportier or if you want it more comfortable. Overall, a very convincing ride as for the sportiness, especially here with the anti-roll control they have in the AMG model. It does not roll at all. It does not really drive like a big SUV. It rather drives a little bit sports car-like as far as the overall weight goes, of course. So a very, very convincing, agile driving part we had here 
especially in this very model. What engines are there to look out for as well? Of course, the plug-in hybrid variants. I'm really looking forward to the petrol PHEV. That one will probably be both for the GLE SUV and the Coupe, one of the engines to go for. So we will also keep you updated with those. Now looking forward to your feedback in general. Would you pick the SUV GLE or the Coupe? And would you go here for the AMG or for one of the other ones? Please leave out the comments and also let's discuss this car even further. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Hope you enjoyed both the vehicle and also the landscape here and see you next time.